Hello everyone, let's talk about this integral here. Just like the other uh, integral with the octangent as the antiderivative, this one does not require a trick sub to integrate. We only need to turn it into the right form so we can integrate this function directly. And so let's just recall something here first. And so we know that when we take the derivative of sine inverse or arc sine function. Okay, so if we take the derivative of this function, we are actually going to be getting one over the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, so we recognize that this function has a similar form of this one, except that there are some other numbers there that are not one and one here. Right, And so now we just need to think about if it's possible to turn this function into the right form so that we can use this fact right here to integrate this function. Okay, so let's try to do that. So first, we know that uh, the 5 can be taken outside the integral because that's really just the 5 multiplying 1 over the radical. So we don't need to keep the 5 inside the integral here. So we have the 5 times. And then in the numerator, it becomes just a 1. And then the square root, right? The square root is going to be the square root of, um, what is that, 9 minus 9? x squared, right? So it's just all that stuff that we have in there. So we get 9 minus 9 x squared, and then there was the dx. OK, so now that's actually um, one step forward in solving the problem. As you can see here now in the numerator, we do have a 1. And then what we don't have is that we have we don't have a 1 right here, we have a 9 here. And then same thing for the coefficient of the x squared, it should also be a minus 1, but then we have a minus 9 here. But we realize that there, we can actually factor the 9 so that we can turn both numbers into a 1. And so let's try to do that. So if we do that, then we are going to be getting 5 times the integral, okay? And then... I think I may need more space. So maybe I should just do it, do the calculation horizontally here. So we'll continue here. So five times the integral of one, and then the fraction line here. And then now we do the factoring. So it will become square root of, um, okay, so it would be factoring out the nine so that we get the nine here. And then it becomes what? It becomes one minus x squared, and then the dx. So nine times one is nine, and then nine times negative x squared is negative nine x squared. So from there, we can take the nine outside the square root by writing this denominator as the square root of nine and then times the square root of one minus x squared. And then of course the square root of nine will just come out. So in this case, we actually will be having five times the integral of one. And then the square root of nine actually becomes a three. We get the three here. And then we have the square root of just all that stuff that's in there, which is one minus x squared. Okay, so that's nice actually. And as you can see here, we do have one and then over and then the square root of one minus x squared, which is the same function as this one. Now you may say, what about the three? The three can actually be taken outside the integral. And so if we take the three, actually it's one over three. So we have five over three. Yeah, so the 3 is not really just a 3 because the 3 belongs to the denominator. When we take it outside, we're actually factoring out 1 over 3. So when we take it outside, it becomes 1 over 3 times 5. So we're getting 5 over 3. And then the integral of all that stuff, which is exactly this function right here. So that's actually 1 over the square root.
of 1 minus x squared. And then there was a dx. And so now from here, we know that when we take the derivative of the oxine function, we are getting this one over square root of one minus x square. So when we integrate this one over square root of one minus x square, we are going to get the oxine function. So our answer will just be phi over three, and then times the what? Times the oxine function of x, and then plus the constant of integration. And then we're good with this problem. Okay, so for some of the problems, make sure that we check the form first so that sometimes we do not really need to do tricks up, even though tricks up can also uh, allow us to find the NT derivative for this function, but it's unnecessary. So all we need to do is to use some algebraic manipulation and then manipulate this function into a form that we can integrate directly if possible. If it's not possible, then we still need to do tricks up. But if it's possible, then yes, we can turn it into this form and then we can use this fact to find the antiderivative and then we're finished. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please check out my uh, other videos as well. And then also subscribe to my channel. Give me some comments and give me a like. Thank you for watching this video.